From the CBS Broadcast Center in Los Angeles, this is CBS 2 News at 11 p.m. We have not received a proposal over the weekend, and we will be striking tomorrow. No deal, and now thousands of LAUSD teachers will walk off the job tomorrow. It's been 30 years since teachers in the LA Unified School District went on strike. Yeah, but months of failed negotiations have now led to this. Now, CBS 2's Lori Perez, she is live at John Marshall High School in Los Feliz with the very latest. Good evening, Lori. Good evening, Chris and Sharon. This is in some ways where the strike will kick off tomorrow morning. It is here where union leaders plan to picket alongside teachers and parents, and then they plan to hold a press conference at 7:30, right as students are walking up those stairs and entering school for the school day. Monday's forecast calls for rain and a massive strike by LA teachers, who, in anticipation, laminated their signs today and cemented their message. We're trying to do what's right for our students, and we don't feel supported by our district. After 20 months of failed negotiations with the school district, this afternoon UTLA confirmed 31,000 teachers will strike Monday. Among the major sticking points better pay, smaller classes, more nurses, counselors, and librarians. Our students cannot. Our educators cannot, our schools cannot continue to be ignored. Superintendent Austin Butner says the union is ignoring the budget. The district says UTLA rejected a $565 million package to reduce class size, add 1,200 educators, and give teachers a 6% raise. UTLA is still asking for the same set of things they've been asking for since April of 2017 which we've told them we can't afford. It will bankrupt the school district. That's a point union leaders dispute in blunt terms, pointing to LAUSD's $2 billion in reserve. We have an investment banker superintendent who lies to the media without remorse or consequence. Mom Evelyn Pena has her opinion about who's to blame, but her focus is on her son, Darlin. Though the district says schools will be open, morning and after school programs will run, and kids will be supervised, fed, and taught, she'll be keeping him home. I would really, really want them to like put me at ease and say, don't worry, they're gonna be okay. But deep down, I know they're not. Now, some parents do have concerns about safety. Others do not want to cross the picket line. We'll see tomorrow how many children are in the schools. There are 484,000 students who attend Los Angeles schools. I'm Lori Perez. Back to you. Yeah, so many people being affected Indeed. by this. Mm -hmm. And L.A. Mayor Eric Garcetti, he issued his response tonight in this video that was posted to Twitter. I stand with our teachers and agree that L.A. kids deserve smaller classes more support staff and community focused schools. All parents deserve to know that their children are safe and attending great schools. We must also ensure the long term fiscal health of the district. I deeply believe there is a lot more that unites us than separates us and that a just, fair and responsible deal needs to be our immediate priority. We will have continuing coverage of the LAUSD teacher strike tomorrow on CBS 2 News starting at 4.30 a.m. And the coverage continues with more from LAUSD Superintendent Austin Butner on CBS This Morning. All right, now to that weather. Another storm getting ready to strike Southern California. Here's a live look at the radar. You can see the storm coming from the Pacific right there. And as a precaution, Cal Fire Riverside has issued a voluntary evacuation for the Holy Fire burn area ahead of all the rain we're about to get. We have live team coverage as people around SoCal prepare for the next storm, beginning with CBS 2's Crystal Cruz, who's tracking the radar and weather warnings for us. Crystal. Hi, Sharon. Yeah, we've been watching this all night, but here is a great picture of what is expected to head our way. Take a look right now at the radar at 11 o'clock. You can see, look at all of that green. That's just rain. A big band of rain is heading to Southern California. Let's move along. Now, and you can see real quick our future cast Monday. Monday by midday, we are expecting all of that rain. There it is, right there green, yellow, some snow. So it's going to be a big day tomorrow, and we're expecting rain for four straight days. Friday, that's when things should clear up. I'll send it back to you guys. All right, thanks, Crystal. And several neighborhoods on the Riverside County side of the Holy Fire Burn area, they are under voluntary evacuation warnings tonight. That includes areas between Glen Ivy and Lake Elsinore. People are being told to leave now while it's still safe. 
there is a potential for dangerous debris flows crashing down hillsides. CBS 2's Christy Fajardo is in Corona with more on that. Many of the residents here at the Glen Eden Sun Club have already cleared out. And take a look, the sign in the window reads voluntary evacuations. But the general manager here says by tomorrow, he expects that sign to read mandatory. We've been preparing for several months. Uh, we knew it was coming. General manager Art Bell says ever since the holy fire scarred the hillsides, rain brings them down. During the last storm here at the Glen Eden Sun Club, he watched helplessly as waves of mud crashed and breached the banks at the 150-acre campus. We had some doubters in the beginning until they saw that come down last time. We had a huge steel bridge that went down more than a quarter mile. It just swept away like it was nothing. Uh, boulders, uh, three, four, five feet in diameter, uh, were flying in the air like ping pong balls. And here comes the debris. This is how Bell says it started. First, just a creek bed filling up with debris, overflowing from a catch basin the resort had built after the fire. Within minutes, it turned into this. So much mud, it took weeks to haul it all out. Now many of the 150 or so residents clear out at the sign of rain. There was no uh, structure damage. Uh, tennis courts were uh, filled with mud. A lot of the homes had mud up to them uh, underneath. Uh, we were able to dig out. Since then, Bell says crews have widened and deepened the creek bed. And not just sandbags, but boulder walls stand guard against mud flows. But as they learned last month, rain can quickly undo all their hard work. And we're just preparing for the worst for this coming week and for the next five years. They say three to five years, it could be bad. Bell expects some of the residents who stayed behind to clear out sometime tomorrow before the rains come in. And he says it's going to be a long couple of days. In Corona, Christy Fajardo, CBS 2 News. Going to be a very long couple of days. Oh, for sure. All right, let's go to CBS 2's Jeff Nguyen. He continues our live team coverage with a look at how people are preparing in Malibu. Jeff. Chris and Sharon, right behind us is Decker Canyon Road, which has been closed all weekend after rain fell here. And when you walk this way, you can see why. The hills here are still scarred after the recent fire. And now rain is expected to return in a matter of hours. Tonight, a crew of female inmates filled sandbags at Will Rogers State Beach right off Pacific Coast Highway. This is what we're concerned about right here. While people like Tim Biglow are preparing for the rain that's on its way. It's all burnt. Everything, see the trees up there? It was all burnt. He lives in West Malibu's Trancas Canyon, which is still scarred by the recent Woolsey fire. Friday night, this debris basin filled during a downpour, and mud ran down the exposed hills into his neighborhood. We've been up and down the street all day trying to help people with sandbagging and uh, cleaning out uh, mud and you know all our drains and gutters and getting ready for the for this storm. This weekend, PCH was closed for several hours after mud had to be cleared during the last round of rain. And Decker Canyon Road is closed to traffic as a precaution. With rain expected to fall for days, Jody Kern isn't taking any chances. Really, really concerned. I, uh, we're going to, my girlfriend and I are actually going to evacuate because, you know, we need to work. We just, my work is over this way uh, towards town. And so we're going to stay in the valley. Tim Biglow says he and some of his neighbors are going to stay and defend their home, which is what they did during the Woolsey fire. I will not go into work tomorrow, probably, probably not this week. It may be obvious, but we see this happening all the time. So here's the reminder. Do not drive your car through flooded areas or moving water because it could have deadly consequences. Live in Malibu, Jeff Nguyen. CBS 2 News. All right, Jeff, thank you. Some breaking news to tell you about in the Westlake District. Sky 2 over the scene as a person hit by a subway train was put into an ambulance. Yeah, we don't know if it was a male or a female, but we are told the person was in a tunnel about 200 yards west of the Westlake MacArthur Park Station. There were no injuries aboard the train, but it has been stopped for this investigation. Tonight, a search for an arsonist in Ontario. Yes, yeah, so police say a firebug torched several cars in a parked hotel parking lot near the Ontario Convention Center. And it was all caught on video, as you can see right here. 
We'll take a look at this. This right here is the aftermath. Seven cars were totaled. Investigators say whatever accelerant was used on the first torch car spread down the gutter, setting those other cars on fire. Go outside and all of a sudden there's flames everywhere on like three of these cars. It was, it was insane. We were at the convention, so we were about to pack up all of our uh, costumes and gear and go and put it in the cars so we could leave early in the morning. Fortunately, we did not. And at the convention was a cosplay event. Now, guests from two hotels had to be evacuated as a precaution. There is secu security video from the hotel of the crime. So far, no arrests have been made. And the Orange County Sheriff's Department has a Facebook tribute tonight for a brave member of their team. Their canine, Arco, died last night. He was trained in patrol and narcotics. Arco was deployed with SWAT, air support, and harbor patrol. In his career, he helped with more than 70 arrests and helped take hundreds of pounds of drugs off the street. Arco will be greatly missed. He looked like a happy canine yeah, as well. Been. So All right, so a legal ruling over birth control that impacts millions of women. That's coming out. Plus, a man walks into a store, douses the place with gasoline, and then lights a match. And? So hopefully, we could dedicate ourselves just a little more and just staying aware of it. We're talking California strong. Jimmy Fox and other celebrities raise money for victims of the borderline shooting and the California wildfires. The Chargers lose to the Patriots, and now their season is over. We'll have a report for you coming up later in sports.